how to create a six inch uh, ruler using on shape in order to be produced using the laser engraver. So I've already gone ahead and I've already created a new document in on shape uh, and I'm going to start by making a new sketch. If you are continuing from a previous document it's important that you do not make a new sketch. You would actually double click on your existing sketch uh, to continue working on it. But again, this is a new fresh document starting from the beginning, so I'm actually going to click on my top work plane. I'm going to make a new sketch. I'm going to name this sketch Ruler. Because the key about designing for the laser is that all of your all of your design goes on a single sketch, unlike 3D printing that incorporates multiple sketches. So I'm going to change my view to the top view. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, and I'm first just going to go ahead and design a one inch tall by six inch rectangle and everything I'm doing here applies to a 12 inch ruler as well and we're going to start by doing our increments for the inch side now uh, the increments are going to be broken down at by a sixteenth of an inch so I'm going to zoom in here I'm just at the bottom left corner of my ruler and I'm going to draw a 0.1 inch line to get started so this is going to be my first little sixteenth inch line right here and I'm going to use my dimension tool to dimension the distance between the end of my ruler and that line to be exactly 1 16th. It's interesting that on shape shows 0 0.63, and if you double click on it, it goes into 1 16th, because 1 16th is actually 0 0.0625. Next, I'm going to grab the linear pattern tool, click on my little line I drew, and two things have to change. So first off, it wants to know how many copies. Well, 16 times 6 is 96 and the reason I got that is that there's 16 16 inch lines in every inch and then there's six inches in a six inch ruler so 16 times 6 96 copies so I just double click on the three change that to 96 then the one is the distance between my copies so if I zoom out you can see that these copies actually go all the way to the end of the ruler well really the distance between each 16 inch line is a 16 of an inch now the way the pattern tool works is it doesn't show you all the copies if you do more than five. So it shows me this little dotted line here. And if I look at the end of my ruler, it'll show me where it ends with another dotted line there. And if I double click, it'll actually draw all those lines. So there's my 16th inch lines. Next, we have to draw our eighth inch lines. So I'm going to grab my line tool. There are two 16ths in every eighth, so I count two lines in. I'm going to extend my line to make it a little bit taller. I'm extending it by 0.1. Pattern tool, click on your new extension. The distance between should be an eighth of an inch because it's your eighth inch lines. And we need half as many copies, so eight times six is 48. Double click to confirm. The next unit of increment we have to do here is quarter inch lines. So I'm gonna count four lines in. One, two, three, four. So there's four sixteenths in every one quarter. Extend that by 0.1. Pattern tool. Click on the quarter inch line. I don't like that on shape. It puts the pattern tool line over existing lines. So if you can't find your lines, you can always hover over and move them around. So the distance for this should be one quarter and 24 copies because four times six is 24. Notice as you do this, you should see that your lines should be lining up. If they're not lining up each way, then you know you actually have a, a mess up in your measurement summary. You have to double check your measurements. Then we need our half inch line, which are eight lines in. So I counted eight lines in. I'm going to extend that by 0.1. Pattern tool. The distance between should be every half of an inch. And two times six would be 12. So there's 12 of those. And finally, our inch line. So I have to count 16 lines in. Extend that by 0.1 pattern tool for the final time. This time the distance is one inch because this is every inch and the copies would be six because there are six inches in a six inch ruler. So there are all my lines. Now for the metric side it's very similar. So I'm going to start by drawing a 0.1 inch line coming down from the top this time and we're going to start by incrementing in every millimeter. So I'm going to dimension the distance from the end of my ruler to this line to be one millimeter, but on shape by default is in inches. But you can type in one space mm, and it'll actually convert that to being millimeters for you. Then I'm going to grab my pattern tool, and the distance should again be one space mm between. And there's actually 153 
uh, millimeters in a six inch ruler, but we can only pattern up to 100 at a time. So I'm going to type in 100, and that's going to pattern 100 millimeter lines, which is a little over halfway. Then I'm going to grab my pattern tool again, click on my very last line, one millimeter for the distance, and we need 53 more, and that should take us right to the end of our ruler. Next, we need our half inch, or I'm sorry, half centimeter lines, which are five millimeters. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Extend the line by 0.1, just like before. Pattern tool. Click on my new extension. The distance is either 0.5 centimeters, or you could say five millimeters. It's the same amount. And we will need 30 of those. Looking pretty good. And finally, we need our centimeter line. So centimeters are every 10 millimeters. So I'm going to go to 10 millimeter lines in. Extend that by 0.1. Pattern tool. This is going to be every 1 centimeter, so 1 cm. And there will be 15 of those. So there's all of our lines. And Unfortunately, there are all these little increment, these measurements. So we can't delete these measurements, but you can drag them out of the way. So all these guys that are kind of blocking your view, uh, you can move them because the next step is actually to start adding your numbers, uh, all of your number lines. And uh, whether you want to increment the inches or the fractions or decimals or whatever, that's up to you. But at a, at a minimum, you need to increment the centimeters, so 15 centimeter lines, and the inch lines. So I'm going to grab my text tool, and I'm going to go to my first inch line. I'm just going to make a text box, and I'm going to type in 1. You can change your font. You can select bold, whatever you're looking to do. And I'm going to dimension that to be 0.2. This is obviously a stylistic design. You do not need to dimension that to be the same. And then I want to go ahead and I want to draw my second inch line, 2, bold, to mention that to be 0.2. Third inch line, three, bold. To mention that to be 0.2. Fourth inch line, four, bold. Mention that to be 0.2. And fifth line. And then again, dimension to be 0.2. Now, some people do put a six inch line right here. Technically, six is the end of the ruler. You do not have to put six, but if you'd like to, you can put a six on the end there. Sometimes people do it smaller. Uh, and then the other thing is, dimensioning these, it would be nice if they were all aesthetically in the same you know, location, if they were all aligned. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can either dimension from the bottom. So for example, I can dimension all of them to be exactly a certain inch from the bottom. Or I could actually grab my line tool and turn on construction mode, which is right here, this dotted line. You could also press Q on your keyboard. Notice how both line and construction are lit up. And I can actually draw a horizontal line that goes across my ruler and then dimension each of these boxes to be zero inches down from the horizontal line and now make them all start at the same the same height so I can and then again say from here to here zero that one's already on there and then you could also dimension the distance from your inch line if you want to be exact like that, or you could always use your handy transform tool and use your transform tool to kind of move and relocate your numbers around. So there's my inch lines. Now for the centimeter lines, instead of drawing this horizontal line, I'm actually just going to grab my, my text tool and click straight onto the corner of the centimeter line and actually draw text aligned with it uh, to keep myself kind of organized there. So again, just going to put a one, I'm going to dimension these to be slightly smaller. I'm actually dimensioning them to be 0.1 tall instead of the inch lines that were uh, 0.2. So there's my first, two, bold, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
that one. Three. Dimension V.1. So it's up to you on your position. Uh, there's a lot of ways to put these in place, and in theory, they don't all have to be aligned, but it is certainly more aesthetically pleasing if they're all lined up and nice and neat. There's point one. And like the, uh, the six inch, you might struggle to fit a 15 on the end here for your final centimeter line. Um, so you can either put it and dimension it smaller. So for example, I can point, dimension this to be 0.05 so it fits. Um, or I can you know, maybe not put it at all. That's kind of up to you. The next thing we have to do is we have to actually add our increment here. So you have to tell your user what are they measuring in. So for example, this is going to be centimeters and then inches. So I actually put these in one text box so they're aligned automatically. You could also do two text boxes here. And that is far too large. So I'm just going to dimension this to be point 0.1 wide. And then use my trusty transform tool to move this. So I'm labeling the top as centimeters the bottom as inches, and actually I'm going to go back in, I'm going to right click and hit edit text and actually separate these with a couple extra enters just to separate centimeters and inches a little bit more. And again, this could have been two text boxes, you don't have to do it in one necessarily. And then finally you have to put your name on the ruler somewhere. So if you wanted to, some people make the three a little bit smaller and put their name in the middle. Um, I'm just going to grab another text box tool and put my last name, you can do first name, last name, nickname, Whatever fits you there, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it uh, 0 0.65. Then again, use my transform tool just to kind of manually move this where it should be. Now at this point, this is actually done and ready to be turned in. So I'm going to hit my green checkbox to confirm my sketch. Look around, make sure nothing's going off the edge or anything like that. Then I'm going to right click ruler and hit export as DXF, DWG, DXF, release 14, all that default is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to name it Erdreich, my class period, so I'm just going to say 1A, whatever your class period is, and then ruler, and export that to my computer, which can now be turned in to Google Classroom. Alternatively, instead of adding the numbers in Onshape, you can export as a DXF and actually import it into Gravit Designer a graphic design program and add your numbers that way. It's a couple extra steps, but you have access to more fonts. Uh, so that's really up to the user on what they want their product to look like. If you did want to add the fractions, it would certainly be a lot easier to add the fractions in Gravit Designer rather than on shape, just because of the nature of the, the program.